Before even starting this video, I wanted to give a huge thank you to my buddy Tyler. He is the one that created an awesome CR10 bootloader flashing right up, which I will place a link in the description of this video, which made it extremely easy for me to uh, go ahead and flash the bootloader on my Ender 3 and share this with you guys. So thank you, Tyler. Hey, what's going on guys? Dana from ModBot here. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to flash the bootloader to your 3D printer, specifically the Ender 3 in this video, but it will be very similar for the Ender 2, the CR10, the ANA A8, so on and so forth, a wide variety of 3D printer boards. If you don't know why do you're flashing a bootloader, maybe you shouldn't be doing it, but I'm flashing a bootloader so that way I can write firmware through the USB to my uh, main board for some upgrades I plan on doing. You won't need a whole lot, but you will need a programming device, which I'll place in the description of this video, and also some breadboard male to female jumper wires, which will make it a hell of a lot easier um, to plug in the programmer. Software, you'll need the Arduino IDE and just some drivers, which again, links will be in the description of this video. So this is the USB ASP programming device that I got from Atmel. Um, it's specifically marketed as a quadcopter um, programming device, but this works fantastically. So you'll get this little adapter that the ribbon cable will plug into, and then you'll plug in the six six pin portion uh, into it, and then you've got the actual main programming device itself that the other end of the ribbon cable plugs into. I'm kind of just showing you how everything gets fitted in this little clip right here. Luckily, there's not a bunch of different places to plug things in, so due to the notches in the ribbon cables, you should be able to um, plug this in correctly without any issues at all. Now, you will need to actually cut away at the uh, portion with these six pins that plug in, or the six female ports that plug in. I just used a little Dremel tool that I had just to clear away some of the plastic on the side so that way you have space. Uh, at least for the Ender 3, you might not have to do this on other 3D printers. If you don't want to cut away, you can just pick up these male to female jumper cables and plug the male end in, and then you'll have the female ends where you can just loosely plug them in. Uh, but for me, I didn't want to wait on these jumper cables, so I literally just cut away at the sides of that plastic plug as you saw there. It's really easy to do. You don't even have to have a Dremel. You can use like, a little handsaw and just cut off a tiny bit of the sides. So next, we're going to go ahead and get into our Creality uh, Ender 3 main board. You've got two screws on the front, and you've got one screw on the back. If you pull the bed forward, you'll gain access to that. These are the only three screws that are actually holding the top cover in. So once you've removed those, you can slide the bed back and just lift off to the left and place the cover on the side. Uh, be careful because there is a fan attached to it. You don't want to, you know, damage by pulling too hard. So I just set it off to the side right next to it, as you can see here. Next, there's a little jumper pin that will come on the programmer. You want to make sure it's on the far right two pins. As you can see pictured here, there's five pins and I have it placed on the far right. That's for five volts. Um, by default, it comes on pins that uh, puts it at, I think, 3.3 volts, so you want to make sure you move that over to the far right as pictured there. Then go ahead and plug in the USB cable to the programmer. The other end, you're just going to go ahead and plug in to the six pins on the Ender 3 board that you can see on the right side of the LCD ribbon cable. I went ahead and removed the ribbon cable for the LCD screen just to give me a little bit cleaner access to it. And again, the ribbon cable is the reason why the plug for that is blocking some of the area you need, which is why you have to do that whole sawing thing that I showed you a second ago. Once you've plugged in the cable, it should light up blue, the board. That's how you know that you've plugged it in correctly and that um, basically it's connected with your programmer. And we can move forward to the computer now. So on a Windows computer, hold down the shift key on your keyboard and go ahead and click restart. You'll definitely have to do this if you have Windows 8 or Windows 10. Then it'll pop up this where you can click troubleshoot, advanced options, and startup settings. At, there, at this screen, just go ahead and click restart. We're gonna have to disable driver signature enforcement, uh, basically, otherwise you will not be able to install the drivers for this. Once it reboots, you'll be greeted by this screen. You're gonna hit the seven number on your keyboard. That'll disable driver signature enforcement and it'll w boot up Windows after that with that enabled. Next, you're gonna go ahead and download the drivers for the programmer, which the link will be in the description. Once you enter the URL into your um, address bar, it'll download this zip file and you just go ahead and extract the zip file onto somewhere you can find it. I just did my desktop. Once you've done that, you're going to go ahead and open up your device manager. You can just go to the start menu and search for device manager. So inside device manager, you're looking for under other devices where it says USB ASP. You're going to right click on that and then click on update driver. 
Then you're going to browse your computer looking for that driver and you're going to browse to your desktop where you extracted the drivers just a second ago. You want to click on the libusb underscore 1.2.4.0. Once you've clicked that, just go ahead and click OK, click Next. It will pop up a warning that is only because this driver is not signed by Windows, but it is fine. Once you've done that, you have successfully installed the driver for your uh, programmer. So next you go to Arduino's website. I will place again a link in the description to where you can download the Arduino IDE. Just go ahead and install this like you would just a normal program. And once you've installed it, just go ahead and open it up, which I show you guys here. So inside of Arduino, go to File, go to Preferences, and in the additional Board Manager's URL, you're going to need to paste this link that I will have in the description of this video. Um, just paste it in that slot and go ahead and click OK. This will add what we need to be able to install the Sanguino board. Next, we're going to go to Tools, we're going to go to Board and Board Manager. In Board Manager, just search for Sanguino board and install it. To install it, just simply click on it. There might be multiple versions, so I just selected the latest version and then clicked Install. Once you're done with that, then you're going to go back to Tools, you're going to go to Processor and choose ATmega1284 or ATmega1284P, 16 megahertz. So the port's going to be different on everyone's computer depending on which port you have your um, device plugged into but if you just unplug and plug it back in you should be able to see which COM port it is um, that pops up so mine was COM port 1. Lastly just go to tools go to programmer and choose the type of programmer which for this one again is USB ASP as you can see here just click on that And if you've done all of the previous steps correctly, you should be able to go to Tools, click Burn Bootloader, and have it burn the bootloader. If it gives you these errors that you see down below, don't worry about it. It's still installed the bootloader correctly. It is an extremely quick process, and um, again, that is it. Most of the work is truly just the software side. Getting the driver set up was a royal pain in the butt, and also having to cut that part on the board was annoying. Um, but if you have those male to female cables, then you can just plug them in and then it'll plug right into that pin header. So you won't have to do any cutting if you don't want. But again, that wasn't that big of a deal. Just make sure you do the driver stuff correctly. Windows is a royal pain trying to install unsigned drivers. So hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace, guys.